What is up my fellow YouTube community? Now if you've been following my videos lately, you probably noticed that I like DIY projects. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom modern style fire pit. But this is not your ordinary fire pit. This design is an in-ground natural wood burning fire pit, which is quite labor intensive but definitely doable, especially if you have a beautiful lady to help you. So the first thing you want to do is to map out the perimeter of the fire pit. My yard is on a slope so I had to level out the whole area before I can get started. This part took a lot of digging but is absolutely necessary. You want the whole area to be as level as possible. So here is what it looks like when the ground was nice and level. After several hours of intense digging comes the next part. More digging! Yep, so the first part that we dug up was for the seating area. Now we're gonna dig up the actual base for the seating area. The base of this area is about 8 inches deep because the cinder blocks that I'm using for the walls are that tall. Pretty straightforward so far, so next I'm going to set the perimeter of cinder blocks for the base area. First I set up a level string line. This will help me guide the blocks into place. After double checking to ensure level, I repeated the steps with two other sides and left one side open for a very specific reason and that reason being because I ran out of material and had to go back to the store and I decided to stop there. <laughs> so in the meantime I decided to dig the actual pit of the fire pit. I wanted this to be a rectangle since the actual fire pit area is a rectangle as well. The full area is 10 by 12 feet, it's, it's pretty big, so the actual pit area is going to be 3 feet by 2 feet, which is it's normal. Nothing too crazy. The depth of the actual pit is another 10 inches. It was starting to get difficult to dig any deeper because of how hard the soil was. So I decided that's good for now. As I started pouring the sand, I realized I forgot one very important step. Since the pit is below ground level, there needs to be a source of oxygen to feed the fire. So that's why I got this dryer tube extension and a cover for it. This will go to the bottom of the fire pit and up to the ground level. Therefore allowing fresh oxygen to get to the bottom of the fire pit. So I backfilled a little, now I'm ready to work on the base of the fire pit again. First poured about an inch of sand, made sure I tamped it down and made sure it was level. Then I added about a couple inches of gravel. Also made sure to level since this is where the brick perimeter of the pit will sit on. So using concrete adhesive and bricks, I decided to lay out the bricks and glue them accordingly. Obviously I staggered each row for structure and stability and for looks as well. I forgot to mention I was making sure everything was level row by row and when I was finished it turned out absolutely great. At every angle it was really nice and level. Very nice. Once I give this thing about 24 hours to dry I'm gonna pour this lava rock to the bottom. Then get started on the seating area, which I will use these huge concrete tiles, two foot by two foot. Um, they weigh like 90 pounds each. Very heavy duty stuff, but it goes along the same style as my patio, so it's gonna look pretty nice. So everything is all dried up and I'm ready to lay down these concrete pavers for the seating area. I've been tamping it down quite often and now I'm probably ready to start adding some sand. So this is all-purpose sand, it's the same stuff that I use for my patio, 
uh, really nice and helpful to put down pavers, make them a lot easier to make them level. So once everything is nice and level, it is time to layeth the pavers. So everything laid down very nice, had a really nice tight fit. And we also laid down weed barrier for the floor. So next we laid down the white marble pebble for the flooring. This matches the design of our patio and it looks pretty nice. We could have definitely stopped here, but I feel like the fire pit would be more complete if we added backrests. Using the same cinder blocks, we can make a perimeter for the backrest, which is not too tall, but perfect height to sit level with the ground once the sod is installed. As usual, I used a level string line in order to set the cinder blocks into place. Now that the blocks are in place and the perimeter is backfilled, we're ready to start putting the caps on top of the cinder blocks. The caps are slightly wider, about two inches wider than the cinder blocks themselves, so it leaves a little bit of an overhang which gives it a nice look. The entryway to the fire pit I left open because I wanted a small step down directly from the grass to the seating area. This is why I'm gluing these caps together in order to provide a barrier for the grass and a nice step down. Once the glue was dry, I then backfilled and tamped the area down. Next, I laid down the cap covers before gluing them to get a visual idea of how it's going to look like. There ended up being gaps which I adjusted to be in the center. I will cut them out and glue them later. Using heavy duty construction adhesive, I began to glue all the cap covers. As the glue is drying, it's a good idea to frequently check the level because it can shift. Now that we are ready to cut out the pieces for the gaps, I'm gonna show you a cool trick on how you can get a perfectly 90 degree cut each time. This does require a circular saw, a special blade that cuts concrete, cement, bricks, and that kind of stuff, and two clamps along with a framing triangle, framing square, I forget what it's called. Anyways, this is quite simple. First you clamp down the brick, then set your circular saw right where it needs to go to cut the line. And then you set your framing angle to touch the edge of the saw and clamp it down right there. The framing angle will act as a guide to provide a perfectly 90 degree cut. Nice fit, so now we can repeat these steps for the remaining gaps. And then the project is complete. Congratulations.